Now, importantly, you know, the, the field of genomics is, is not new and has been, has been advancing for the last 12 to 15 years. And it was very important for Element that we recognize the creativity and the contributions and the innovations of, of so many researchers and companies that have come before us. And so we didn't want to draw a new starting line. We wanted to take advantage of the analysis methods, the library preparation methods, et cetera. And so that means we have two streamlined workflows to, uh, to put samples onto the instrument. The first is an adept workflow, which allows any, any standard Illumina library from, um, from any vendor, as long as the P5 and P7 sequences are, are intact and it's a double-stranded DNA library, that kit can enter this ADEPT library compatibility kit. There's no additional PCR, no additional amplification, and that circularizes the library and makes it compatible with the ABD sequencer. So you can go directly from an existing library prep or your favorite library prep onto the sequencer with no other modifications other than the use of this kit. We are also releasing Elevate, what we call Elevate workflows, and that is what we have available today is you can substitute in our indexes and adapters with, with a favorite third-party kit to uh, uh, place uh, libraries onto the instrument. And then in the future, we'll have true element elevate end-to-end -end kits that, that will take in further advantage of some of the unique characteristics of the instrument. And we'll begin launching those kits uh, in uh, late Q3 to early Q4 this year. We see very strong indexing performance. I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, and then we see a typical indexing CV around 15%. You know, we've, we've, uh, we did four brief beta tests and you can see that our Q30 scores, our uh, output per machine, et cetera, got better over time. These are the four beta sites that we performed early this year. First one was in, the, in late January, last one was in mid April. And then we've continued to advance the machine beyond even these times. <clears throat> all of the manufacturing for both uh, instruments and reagents is all done in-house at, in Ele at Element in San Diego. And our site training prep is, uh, we do that in advance. Installation of the machine typically takes two to three days, followed by another two to three days of application training. And, and we, of course, have built out a, a service and support team to support the instruments robustly. I did want to spend a little bit of time on the Q40 uh, calling and scoring because I think it's quite important. The way we trained our Q tables was using 20 runs of human genomes. Um, this was a PCR free library prep and that was to minimize any upstream errors. And that um, we use publicly available known data sets and we use uh, uh, some of the genome in a bottle, et cetera, to make sure that we were um, not, we were accurately characterizing the, uh, the variants that were observed. And then we were then, evaluated our training runs or evaluated our training data using an additional four independent runs. And this is just some of the uh, um, values for read one and read two, the percent Q30 and percent Q40s we saw in these early training runs. I should note that these numbers as we've made some chemistry improvements have actually improved and we continue to, uh, to make these trainings, but I wanted to demonstrate that here is um, recalibrated Q scores versus predicted Q scores with the dot solid line showing the predicted and then the dotted line showing the observed on the recalibrated Q scores in read one and read two. So you can see very strong concordance uh, between predicted and observed and the vast majority of data being at and above Q40 as you see here. And again, this is a PCR free library. I should note that this all of this data is publicly available um, on the website. So anyone can repeat this analysis uh, as well as um, there's a number of other data sets available on the website for different uh, applications. And if we do the same thing with a PCR plus library, you can see we can actually, the, the sequencing accu accuracy is high enough that we start detecting library preparation introduced errors. And we can see different uh, levels of modulation off this curve depending on um, PCR amplification kits, et cetera. But you can see that effect that we see in this, uh, in this here. I should also note, the BC, the uh, recalibration of the Q scores is all done with open source software. This is the exact command line that was used. We try to be as transparent as possible with all of this training and example data that we that we have. Um, we're more than happy to share these details with anyone interested in the future. I've already mentioned the the, co the coverage is a function of GC content. This is just seeing that a bit bigger, and then also proving that over multiple runs um, we see this very significant range of very flat GC bias, allowing 
bacterial and other other challenging genomes due to GC uh, content to be sequenced very effectively with uh, with highly normalized coverage. I mentioned this uh, a few moments ago again that that I just wanted to show it in a slightly bigger figure that ability to flexibly load the instrument from uh, above specification at 900 million all the way to 1.3 billion and again that effect on Q30 to Q40 very predictable uh, and very consistent. <laughs>